Welcome back to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything you need to take your photography over to the next level. My name is RC, and this week I want to talk to you a little bit about how to do some post-processing and make it easier for yourself in Bridge as well as Lightroom. So let's take a look at this here. Inside of Bridge, I have something. Oh, it looks like I have the wrong folder. Oh, no. Doesn't matter. Watch this. I wanted to show you this. Inside of Windows and OS X, you can do the same thing, right? If you have a folder available to you inside of a window, you can always just drag it right inside of Bridge on top of this address bar. Automatically shows you that section. So it makes it a lot easier. But I wanted to talk to you about how to be able to batch sync, right? How to be able to batch edit inside of Camera Raw. If you take a series of images, right? So I have a series of DNG files here. I'm gonna shift click them. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna open in Camera Raw. From here, you have the option to, let's say, make these changes. Let's say for, the, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, what I wanna do is I wanna increase the clarity, decrease the saturation. Now, I've done this to one image. What if I wanna do it to 10, 50, 100 images? What do I do? And what if I wanna save these as JPEGs? Well, it's pretty easy. You'll notice that here on the left-hand side, because I opened up a bunch of them, you have a bunch of images here. You can just click on the Select All button right in this one area, and from here, it'll select all of the images inside of the list. The darkest one that sits selected is the one that it's going to use as a model. That's gonna be the baseline for most of this stuff. So once you have that set, all you have to do is click on Synchronize. You click on Synchronize and you can specify which one of these you want to do. So in this case, I can say, well, you know what I want? I actually want white balance. And I actually want something else. Let's say right now I want exposure, I want clarity, I want saturation. Oh, well, maybe I don't want white balance. I uncheck that. Once you do this, you click OK, and all of the images here on the left-hand side are synchronized. Done. That's it. You have to do nothing else for that. Now, they're all RAW files. You want to save them out? You click on Save Images right here in the lower left-hand corner, and you can specify these into a different location. Now, I'm just gonna make this location test. Click on Create, Select. You can specify what you wanna call it. You can change the format, negative, JPEG, GIF, or Photoshop. In this case, I'm making GIFs. There's the quality. I click Save, and now watch, I'm done. Now, I did this inside of Bridge. Why did I do this inside of Bridge? Let me show you. If you are in Photoshop, and inside of Photoshop, you did a file open, and you went into an area here, and let's just say that I go to the same project and I select multiple images. You have the exact same settings, so I can go ahead and I can increase something, I can select all, I can synchronize, I can synchronize everything that I want right there. I click on Save As, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm gonna save it into a second folder. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll call this Test 2. The moment that I hit save, look what happens. I can't do anything in Photoshop until this thing finishes. That's not a good thing. But your computer actually has two copies of Camera Raw. One Camera Raw that shows up inside of Bridge and one Camera Raw that shows up inside of Photoshop. So if you do this setup inside of Bridge, watch this, open in Camera Raw, this is open, this is processing, but at the same time, I could still go into Photoshop, I could still continue to work. So send all of the heavy lifting over to Bridge if you need to do batch processing, and now you can use the camera raw inside of here, or continue to use Photoshop for whatever other project you want. So having something like Bridge do the heavy lifting for you, I think is gonna be a great thing. Now, I wanna show you how to be able to do this in Lightroom using Synchronize and AutoSync, as well as how to be able to spray a preset, which is something that I like. We also have a conversation with Brian O'Neill Hughes, and all of that is coming when we come back here on Photography Tips and Tricks. See you guys in a bit. We all know the difference a great teacher makes. They inspire you, challenge you, and push you to do the things you never thought you could. For creatives, that means you've got to know your tools inside and out, whether it's Photoshop or photography, lighting or Lightroom, InDesign or After Effects. And while there are free videos out there, you have to watch 30 bad ones 
just to find a decent one. And a lot of times, the techniques are either outdated, complicated, or just plain wrong. What we need is a better way to learn. One that connects amazing teachers with creative people all over the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A thriving educational community with nothing but the most talented, engaging, and respected teachers in the industry. Then we simplify the whole learning process with short, clear, concise classes. That's exactly what we've created for you right here at Kelby One. Welcome back to Photography Tips and Tricks RC here. Now, we've talked about how to be able to do synchronization of settings inside of Bridge and Photoshop, but there's a lot of you guys that are using Lightroom. So let's talk about how to do it there. Now, I'm in the library module and I have a series of images here and I've put them into a collection. Now, I can double click on one of the images and go into the develop module. Having that set, I can go ahead and make any changes that I want from here, right? So I'll just go ahead and I'll decrease, I'll keep my contrast normal, Actually, let me just reset everything here. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'll go ahead and I'll increase my clarity a little bit and I'll decrease my saturation, make a black and white. If I want to have that happen with a bunch of different places, I could always single click on one, shift click on the series there. You'll notice that you have an option here called sync, right? If you click on sync, this will give you the same settings that you saw inside of Camera Raw. Right? They're just wide instead of tall. Here you can synchronize all of these settings. Right, I can go ahead and click on synchronize. And you'll notice that all of the ones down here in the bottom are automatically changed. Now that's a good thing. But what if you have a series of images that are exactly the same or near exactly the same from an exposure and you want all of them to be changing at the same time? Well, that's what auto sync is for. If you select a series of images, you'll notice that you have sync here and then there's a power button. If you turn that on, now it's set to auto sync. Now, it's kind of hard for you to be able to see here. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so that you can. Notice that I still have all of those set. I have auto sync turned on. Watch what happens when I come over here and I decrease the saturation on one of them. All of them decrease the saturation. You increase it, all of them get increased in saturation. I increase the exposure all of them get the exposure increased. So it's automatically syncing with everything that I have set there. That I think is a really, really good thing. But you can actually take this a step further. Now watch this, I'm gonna go back to my grid view. I'm gonna come over to this one individual file and let's just say that I make a change. Increase my clarity, decrease my saturation, and I'm gonna increase my exposure just a little bit. Now, that's a look that I want. Maybe I'm gonna drop those highlights just a tiny bit. What I can do from here is I can actually create a preset. Under the preset section, click on the plus side, and I'm gonna call this RC's black and white. And I can select what I want off the develop module to be a part of that preset. Once I click on create, that's done. So at any point in time, if I want to apply that preset here, I could just go to the preset, there's my user preset, click it, done. But even better still, go to the grid view. Inside of the grid view from here, I can go ahead and use this spray can down here at the bottom. With this spray can, I can paint a bunch of different things, keywords, labels, flags, ratings, metadata. I'm gonna paint settings. What settings am I gonna paint? Presets. Click on the drop down here, you'll see you have tons of presets. One of them is a user preset. There's my black and white. Now I can go, well, I want this one to be black and white. I want this one to be black and white. I want this one to be black and white. I can click and drag all three of these to be black and white. And it makes it so much easier for you. At any point in time, if you want to bring them back, you could always just go to the presets here. And under these presets, you have an option to take these and bring these back down. So you'll see that under the Lightroom General presets, you have something called zeroed. Click on zeroed. Now you can spray paint all of this stuff. Just click and drag, click and drag, and it brings you right back to normal. So the spray can inside of Lightroom is really, really good for kind of leveraging quick edits right inside of a grid. Now, let's have a quick conversation with Brian O'Neill Hughes. Brian is gonna to talk to us about how to be able to use brightness and contrast and the auto button for new users. Take a look at this. 
Welcome back, everybody. RC here with Principal Product Manager, Brian Hughes from Adobe. What's going on, man? How you Good doing? You. So this is another episode of It's OK. You can do it in Photoshop. So this is the basic premise behind the entire thing. There were a lot of things that in Photoshop previously kind of sucked. They weren't very good. They weren't very good. But one of the things that happened with it is that they got a lot better, yeah. but no one found out that they got better. Brightness and contrast in Photoshop were absolute taboo words to use. Yep. You do not use brightness and contrast. What was the problem and how did you guys get better on it? Yeah, so brightness and contrast, they're pretty awful. They pretty much pushed your data right off a cliff and you lost it all. The problem is everyone's heard of brightness contrast. If I were to put Photoshop down in front of my mom, brightness and contrast are probably the only terms that mean anything to her right. in there. And so we realized, you know, we need to change this. We need to fix it. We can't just keep telling everyone not to use something that we put in the app. Right. So as of a few versions back, brightness contrast, uh, it just works. Now, as always, we give you this <laughs> used legacy checkbox for those of us who demo so you can show just how bad it used to be. Yeah, um, that's pretty contrasting. I'm missing a little bit of data there. Uh, <laughs> so let's reset that and take that off. And if I were to brighten this or even bump up the contrast, it still looks like my image. Right. Now, so it works. It just works as it should. Right. It's, so just go back into it and play with it. It's okay. You're not going to mess okay. anything up. It's all right to go it's there It's okay now. to go to use. Um, the other thing that's in here, which people also don't think of to use because, you know, it's auto. Our manual way must be better than auto. Mm -hmm. uh, try opening five different images and click auto in here. And you'll find that you'll get five different results because it's adaptive auto. What okay. we're doing is we're looking at the histogram and we're comparing the histogram to hundreds, thousands of histograms from professional photographers. I'm not even sure if you guys know about this. Okay. It's super cool. No, it worked, sounds awesome. We worked with Katrina Eisman. We worked with professional photographers. We got all this library mm -hmm. of beautiful histograms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we compare them, and we adjust them, and auto just works. And so the auto that's in brightness contrast, the auto that's in levels, the auto that's in curves, they just work. See, and that's the thing that I think that a lot of the times photographers kind of miss. We tend to over obsess sometimes about the technology and that we have to have our controls on it. When you're looking at products like, you know, Photoshop, I want the technology to evolve. Sure. I want the technology to get better. So when I'm a photographer, I want it to be taken care of yeah. for me, right? I want to focus on the picture. I don't want to necessarily focus on the buttons. So something as simple as auto really does take us a long way. Yeah. So just to show you super quick, let's take the same image and open it in curves. And you'll notice that with curves, it does something really cool. So big, busy, scary dialogue. I'm going to hit auto. If we look closely, it's actually plotting multiple points. So it's not just looking for gray, black, and white values. Again, it's looking at the histogram, mm -hmm. and it's plotting points on there. So if you're a new user, and curves are a mystery to you, and let's be honest, wrangling a diagonal line to yield a proper exposure, that's a mystery. Right. Uh, this helps you get started, because yeah. it drops some points on there for you to start with. Right. So you have the benefit of great processing and the push of a button, yep. and the modularity to be able to go back and edit most of that stuff. Yeah. Guys, it is OK to use auto. <laughs> it is OK to use Brighton as a contrast. You had it here first from Brian Hughes at Adobe. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brian. Hey, listen, so we have the PeachBit ebook deal. Make sure that you go to peachbit.com slash Kelby1, enter in the code Kelby1. You're going to get 40% off of this ebook. Talent is not enough. Business Secrets for Designers, the third edition by Shell Perkins. So great books, great content. Thanks to our folks over at PeachBit1. They give you 40% off of that ebook. All you got to do is put in the promo code Kelby1. Now, the website that I want you to watch this time around, I want you to go to IvanMakarov.com. He's a great photographer and he's a friend over at Smug Mug. So it's a great place to get websites. I like their stuff, but more importantly, I'm loving the work that he's putting on here. Make sure you take a look at IvanMakarov.com. He's also the person who created the One Collection, which is a user-generated book of photography. You'll find out all about that stuff over on his website. So you have a little bit of inspiration. You've got a lot of post-processing that you can take care of. And it's all part of Photography Tips and Tricks. If you want to see more of that kind of stuff, make sure that you go take a look over on the Kelby One website. We'll do tons of this stuff, full content available there, get you up and running very, very quickly. My name is RC. We'll see you guys next week here on Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care.